How's it going, people? I found a, a wonderful little book. Here's the back of the cover. Look at the cloudscape. And... Are you a good person? Try the ultimate test. And I guess I must love being tested. I thought um, I'd sponsor this uh, by Scapegoat Pale Ale. Somehow, scapegoats and the 10C kind of go together. They're both primitive. At least the concepts. Mm. This colored like goat pee, maybe. <laughs> Scapegoat. I wonder where they're getting off the goat part. Obviously, it's an ancient legend of putting all the sins on an animal and then turning it loose or killing it or right? really advanced thinking for today's age. Anyway, I found this on the ground uh, at my work and um, a little illustration there. Do you consider yourself to be a good person? Most people do. However, most of us differ as to the definition of good. The Bible says that God is good and the Ten Commandments are His standard of goodness. Wow, that was a whole process where they came to a conclusion. Uh, they didn't go very far. That's it. God in the Bible, boom, in the conversation. So we will look at God's law. He's looking perplexed. With a tender conscience, ask yourself if you have obeyed the following. One, you shall have no other gods before me. And in parentheses, have you always loved God above all else? Well, i got to be honest, in my youth I did have a fling with Krishna. You know, he seemed to have what I wanted. I was looking at I and the Buddha with interest, but I, technically he's not a god. Uh, I was checking all out, then I found out he was the same god. So, uh, No, I don't have any gods. Two! You shall not make yourself an idol. I can't go on American Idol and become an idol. Well, I guess good thing I got a terrible voice. I can't sing for shit. Have you made a god in your mind that you're more comfortable with? A god to suit yourself? No, I, I didn't make a god on a suit. It's Odin. He was already there. I didn't make him. Someone else did. <laughs> just like someone always makes the gods. They just did it before we did, that's all. Oh, that's some good scapegoat. Hmm. Three. You shall not take God's name in vain. God damn. Have you ever used God's holy name as a cuss word? Well, I guess not really, because God is a generic name. His holy name, if I had said, like, you know, uh, Yahweh, damn, which I just did. Uh, oh, I guess I have. Jesus Christ, what's wrong with me? So, not doing great so far here. Okay, four. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Today's Saturday. This is Sabbath, right? Uh, yeah, Saturday the uh, 10th of uh, March. That's the Sabbath. So how am I doing? Uh, oh, no explanation with that one. Five. Honor your father and mother. I try. Six. It's, it, it helps that they live on different parts of the goddamn continent here. They can't get far enough apart. 
without getting their ankles wet. Right. Six. You shall not murder. Okay. Oh, there's more. In parentheses, God considers hatred to be as murder. Oh, man. Then we've killed a whole bunch of people, all of us. Because, come on, you've hated somebody at one time, even if you took it back later. They were already technically dead. Somehow you killed that person while they're, but they're still alive, and but you're guilty of killing them. Uh, so if you hate, there's there's no Bible passage next to this I notice, but I'm sure you know a person hates they kill a part of the world. Seven. You shall not commit adultery. Uh, maybe better skip that one since I did. <laughs> uh, in parentheses and quotations, whosoever looks upon a woman, the lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. That's Matthew 5, 27, 28. This also includes sex before marriage. All right. Well, I haven't killed anybody, but I hated a few people in the past, so I guess... I've tried to honor my parents, uh, but I don't know. What does that mean, you know? I showed them respect. Is that what you mean? I mean... There's been no honor killings in my family yet. Eight. You shall not steal. Have you ever stolen anything? The value of the item is irrelevant. You're a thief. If you ever did that. You might have stole another baby's rattle. And you don't remember that crime? You're fucking guilty. And you ate that cockroach. We know you did. Nine. You shall not lie. Have you ever lied even once? Including answering these questions. Have I lied during answering these questions? I got the last part right. I <laughs> told the truth. Ten. You shall not covet. This is America, man. That's how we always keep getting bigger houses and cars. We covet stuff. Oh, have you, you ever jealously desired what belongs to others? You mean specifically you have to have their specific? Uh, eh, not really. Mildly jealous? No, no. More like, oh, wow. Man, I wish that was me. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, the Bible says that God will punish all murderers, rapists, thieves, liars, adulterers, etc. That's where they get you, with the etc. He will even judge our words and thoughts. So if you had a thought astray, you're guilty. On Judgment Day, will you be found to be guilty or innocent of breaking His commandments? There's a gavel hitting uh, that the judge's bench. Yeah. Perhaps you think that God is good and he will overlook your sins. No, you said good, not kind. Apparently they're two different things. But it is his goodness that will make sure that murderers, rapists, thieves... Liars, etc., receive judgment. And bang! Guilty! He would be cor a corrupt judge if he turned a blind eye to injustice. Have you kept the commandments? Apparently not. And I don't care. The Bible says that the law is perfect. Well, I say the Bible is uh, not perfect, so obviously it's not perfect about its assessment of the law either, since most of them have nothing to do with civil behavior. 
I mean, I can agree with some of them. <sighs> it commands you to be perfect. Matthew 5, 48. Are you perfect in thought, word, and deed? Will you make it to heaven? That's this place. You know, the clouds. I think it's one. I think it's that one. Um, yeah, that one right, right there. That white fluffy one. I don't know. I mean, in Doctor Who physics, it makes sense. Uh, you may say that you are still good, but God says you are not. See Psalms 14, 2, and 3. So, one of you is lying. And the scriptures tell us that there is no him, that it is impossible for God to lie. Remember that all liars will be cast into the lake of fire. <laughs> Revelations 21 8. God's law demands justice, and the penalty for sinning against him is death. And hell. Listen carefully. If you want to live, I mean, they gotta like play the SmackDown. SmackDown. God Himself made a way where His justice and His goodness could meet. Well, I'm sure it had something to do with shedding blood, right? Can't get by without shedding blood. We broke the law, but he became a man to pay the fine. Makes fit sense in comic book logic, I guess. Maybe. Not really. <sighs> Jesus suffered and died on the cross to satisfy the law. Then he rose from the dead, defeating death forever. Therefore, God can forgive us and grant us the gift of eternal life. But you may still think that you can, from now on, keep the Ten Commandments. But it isn't true that the best of us have lied. Wait, but isn't it true that the best of us have lied, stolen, lusted, hated, failed to love God above all else? and failed to love our neighbors as ourselves? How can we, then, live a good life if we have already sinned against God? At best, we are reformed liars and thieves, but still lawbreakers. <laughs> Think of it this way. Would you sell one of your eyes for a million dollars? If I was blind in that eye, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure, what the hell. Doesn't work anyway. But not currently. They're both pretty decent. Yeah. I'm sure you wouldn't. Your eyes are priceless. Yet, they are merely the windows of your soul. More like the windows of your brain. What then must your life, soul, be worth? With these thoughts in mind, what would be a fair price to pay for everlasting life? It is utterly without price, and it's an impossibility. Yet, if we trust in our own goodness to enter heaven, we are saying to God, 
I should enter heaven because I have done good. I have earned my way in. <clears throat> Imagine if you wanted to give me a brand new, very expensive car. But I said, I can't take it. I feel embarrassed receiving such a gift. Here's ten cents for it. I'm sure you would be very insulted by such a pathetic offer of payment. <clears throat> Besides, if I pay for it, it is no longer a gift. Then how can you expect, keep asking us to earn it? Earn this free gift. No strings attached, but you got to do a whole bunch of shit and do it just right. And give a lot of stuff up. And get pretty damn square. Fit in with the herd. Or the flock, excuse me. Get that fold. Get sheared. <sighs> Besides, if I pay for it, it's no longer a gift. It's a purchase. It's mine by right. When we talk of entering heaven by keeping good by trying to keep the Ten Commandments, etc. We are tossing God ten cents of self-righteousness, which is a terrible insult to Him in light of His sacrifice. The only thing we can do is humble ourselves, repent of our sins, and receive the gift of Jesus Christ alone. All right. So don't listen to that Muhammad guy then, right? Is that what you're saying? It's Jeebus all the way. But they, they believe in Jesus, sort of. And then the Mormons are all about Jesus. So, I mean, you could still end up going the wrong direction there. All right. Almighty God demonstrated how much he loves you when Jesus suffered on the cross. Or he just wanted to try out, try out masochism, see if he liked it. I don't know. Who knows? His ways are mysterious. If you want to trust in your own goodness, then you are saying his agonizing death on the cross was in vain. No, I'll give you ten cents for it. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith. Faith being that you believe something without evidence. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen, if I recall, right? Something like that. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. You cannot earn a gift? Then why do you expect us to follow all these rules to get it? It should be ours automatically if it's a gift. So we have to qualify for this gift. So it's got strings attached. When Jesus said to believe on him, he was saying that we should have faith in him. In the same way, you would trust a parachute to save you when you jump, jump from a plane. Actually, I'd probably have a heart attack doing that, but yeah, better than crashing into the side of a mountain, I guess. But there's a difference. I mean, what Jesus am I getting, you know? The, the four Gospels contradict. you got the Apocrypha saying other things, and you know, and Islam says something else, and the Book of Mormon's got some surprises, and at least I would know who's going to fold the parachute and pack it. <laughs> and I'm going to make sure it's somebody qualified. I'm going to be watching. And then they'll probably have a heart attack on the way down anyway. I'm pretty scared of heights. You don't merely believe in the parachute. You put it on. So i got to put Jesus on it. Don't even know where he is. Please, don't jump without Jesus. How about, I probably wouldn't jump without filling my drawers. 
<laughs> and probably chowdering the inside of the in uh, parachute. <laughs> I think that would be a horrible experience, like drifting down to earth real fast. <laughs> Don't jump without Jesus. If you die in your sins, there is no second chance. God will give you justice, and you will end up in hell forever. Any troubles you have at present are dwarfed by the trouble you are in with your Creator. <clears throat> His wrath abides upon you. John 3, 36. God doesn't want you to go to hell. Neither do you want to go there. So confess your sins to God right now. Put your trust in Jesus to save you. And you will pass from death to life. <clears throat> then read the Bible daily and obey what you read. See John 14, 21. Your obedience to God is proof. Oh, damn. It's hung up. Is proof of your love. Yeah, so join the cult. They'll tell you what God wants. And promise you something they can't give you. But you got to be dead to get it, so it's a win-win for them. <clears throat> he will never fail you. Pray something like this. They got sample prayer in italics. <clears throat> Dear God, today I turn away from all my sins. Name them in parentheses. You better remember, you know. This day, I put my trust in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He is the only way for me to be saved. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Please forgive me. Change my heart and grant me your gift of it. Everlasting life. So there's an ulterior motive to this request. I, what's it really about? You love them that much, or you love living forever that much, or you're just afraid of death that much? In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So this tiny little book says uh, you are not a good person unless you uh, accept that whole Jesus myth. Oh, I... I thought I'd share that, and um, I mean, if you want to go there, one of those, you better be good. That's all. Anyway, found out on the ground, made some use of it. I hope you found it informative or interesting or something. Let me know if you learned something. I wasn't paying attention. Peace. The fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. And it will do more of this sometimes. Got to break up the monotony. I think I'll do a, do some B O M and D N C next. Bye.